Hey guys, it's Tori and today I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite authors. So I had this idea to come up with a new series. I just love learning about authors and coming to understand their background. I feel like it adds another layer to their stories. Um, as I read them, just understanding where they come from, what interests them, their backstory a little bit. Um, it doesn't always add another layer to the story necessarily, but I find it interesting and I like being introduced to new authors that maybe I haven't heard of before. So today I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite authors. Um, she's very popular in the area where I live, um, in Utah, and her name is Shannon Hale. I don't see her books very often on booktube. I know a lot of the ones- Hey, this is me editing and when I say ones, I mean like the books that Shannon Hill has written. So that will make the next few seconds make a lot more sense. <laughs> that are more like what would be read on booktube are a little older. Um, recently she's written more children's books or younger middle grade type books. But she in the past has written a lot of young adult and adult books and I have absolutely loved them as I've read them. Shannon Hale actually grew up loving to write as many writers do, not all, but many. And her mother in many different interviews and things has talked about how she grew up just telling stories and making up mini plays for her and her siblings to do. And eventually she was still writing but she worked as a comedian on stage and in improv for a while. She was able to study in Mexico, the UK, and Paraguay for a while. She ended up receiving her bachelor's in English from the University of Utah and she received a master's in creative writing from the University of Montana. I'm going to show you a few of her books today. Her first book was The Goose Girl. This follows a girl who is a princess. She's betrothed to this prince in another kingdom and while she's traveling there she is betrayed by her lady-in-waiting and she runs away. She gets to the kingdom and she finds that her lady-in-waiting is now impersonating her and she has to work as a goose girl until she can figure out what to do. It's really really good. It's based on a fairy tale, The Goose Girl, and it is so incredible. This is one of my favorite books by her. As her first book it was richly acclaimed and she actually has three companion novels that go along with it including Enna Burning, River Secrets, and Forestborn. Each of these books follows a different character within the same world um, you're able to see them in their own stories as they come to find love, but also f discover more about themselves. And they're so good. Highly recommend. I have recently seen Haley from Haley and Bookland read these and love them. So if you haven't tried them out yet, definitely do because they're great. Also, super annoying. She has a problem with having cover changes in the middle of series. So the rest of them have these pretty like painted type... I mean, Enna Burning switched when I got it. Then River Secrets is the same, like, painted, like the Goose Girl. And then this one has a face on it. But it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. There's another series I'll show you in a second that's even worse. Her most richly acclaimed series is the Princess Academy series. This follows a land where when the prince comes of age, the priests like pray to their gods and discover where in the kingdom the next princess will be from. And so they pray and they are led to this teeny tiny mountain mining town called Mount Eskel where these girls live and in most places in the kingdom where the future queens are found they usually tend to have already been trained in high society but this town is a mining town and so they don't know and so usually the princess academy that is run is usually just symbolic but for them they really need the princess academy to learn how to be princesses um, what it's like to rule a kingdom and everything and then the prince ends up choosing which one he wants to marry I know this sounds like the selection um, But it's not like the selection at all In fact, there's a lot of sixth grade boys who read this if who are told to read this in class and end up loving it and It's really powerful because it shows the power of education and how that helps this town to improve and these girls to help change their town the main character, Mari Miri, 
um, really is able to make a difference in her hometown because of it throughout this series. It's a three almost companion novels but it does follow the same character and they are supposed to be read in order but they're like three distinct stories. They're not as interconnected as some other series but it's so good. Highly recommend. Do not go into it thinking it's like the selection or it's going to be super predictable because it's really not as predictable as you might think. <laughs> I know just from the synopsis you're thinking, oh, I know exactly how that's gonna end, um, but it may not end the way you think it will. Anyway, super good. The second book is, this is the series that changed covers every time they came out with a new one. So we have this pretty, this is my favorite, the pretty painted one again. Then we have Princess Academy of Palace of Stone with a face. <laughs> it's fine. Um, this one is post Princess Academy and it follows their journey outside of their town um, and some experiences they have there. And we continue on the journey in the new world <laughs> for them um, in Princess Academy, The Forgotten Sisters, which I actually just read a couple months ago and I absolutely loved. Again, cover change. I do like, I think these ones are cute, but still, it's annoying that they change the covers every single time. But super good. I love this series. I highly recommend this series if you're looking for something that's inspirational, yet lighthearted and sweet and has really fun, cute characters. I just, I really liked it. Then as for the rest of her young adult books, the rest are standalone. Um, I have here the Book of a Thousand Days, which follows a girl who is the lady's maid, I guess, to a princess who attempts to run, run away with someone she's not supposed to marry. <laughs> and so she's put in a tower for seven years. And the lady's maid is also kept in there with her. And so it's, le it's written like a diary. Um, by the ladies made of their experiences. It's based on another fairy tale. I don't know exactly what fairy tale it's based off of, but it's super, super good. I absolutely love, loved it. Then the last book I have here is actually one that I haven't read yet. I'm planning on reading it soon. This is the only book I own by Shannon Hale that I haven't read, and that is Dangerous. This is a actually young adult sci-fi where it follows a girl who goes to like a NASA camp and she ends up discovering a conspiracy that could destroy the world. So she has to figure out how to fix it. My mom read this and she enjoyed it. So I'm excited to pick it up. I am trying to collect all of Shannon Hale's young adult and adult books. Um, she has a ton of children's books, which I'll mention briefly in a second but I really wanted to get all her middle grade and adult and read them all. So this is the only one I own that I don't, haven't read yet, and then there's one I'll talk about in a second that I don't own yet that I need to get, but yes. Like I said, she's also written many children's books, and these include the Unbeatable Squirrel Girl series. She wrote one of the books in the Spirit Animals series. She wrote two graphic novels, Calamity Jack and Rapunzel's Revenge, both of which are fairy tale inspired Western type novels where like Rapunzel and Jack, like Jack and the Beanstalk, that guy, <laughs> um, live in the Wild West and go on adventures. I've heard those are really good. I'm not a huge graphic novel reader, so that's part of why I don't plan on picking them up, but I've heard they're really good. Then she's also written the Ever After High series and the Princess in Black series, as well as a duology. She's co-written a duology called Best Friends and Real Friends. I don't really know what that one's about. I haven't really heard much about it, but it is a thing. So finally, I'll go through a few of her adult books. So her very first adult book was Austin Land. Yes, this is the foundation for the movie. Austin Land, um, and it's really good. I picked it up a couple years ago and I enjoyed it. Definitely recommend if you liked the movie just to see the foundation of it and see which one you like better because they do have differences that don't make necessarily one better than other in general. The differences may sway individual opinions different directions. I don't know if that made sense, but it does have a sequel, Midnight in Austin Land. That is the one book I do not own yet, so I'm trying to find a way to pick it up at some point it's backlisted so I don't think it's being printed anymore so I have to find it somewhere else but eventually I will get that. And the last book I'm going to talk about by Shannon Hale is actually my most recent read by her. Actually I guess I did read Prince the third Princess Academy book 
sooner than I've read this next book but anyway this one was pretty recent and that is The Actor and the Housewife. This follows a woman by the name of Becky who just wrote a screenplay and she's going to California to sell it. She actually has someone who's willing to buy it and she ends up running into this super famous actor Felix Callahan who is very well known and she she's a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints from Utah and she has four kids and a husband and everything but they end up becoming really really good friends and the synopsis makes very clear like there's nothing like inappropriate going on it's not like an affair book or anything like that it's just they just have a really deep connection and they become really good friends and it just follows essentially 10 years of their lives of Becky's life and how she's able to have a friendship with Felix who's such a popular and attractive actor but still be a mother and obviously they may just be friends but there's also they have to figure out the idea of like potential problems with like attraction and stuff like that and figure that out with not only each other but their spouses because he's married as well and it's just really interesting i really really enjoyed it it's definitely not for everybody if you're not a member of this church which i am <laughs> um it may some of the things may not make sense to you or you may not really connect with it as well but if you are a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and you're a mom even and you're just interested in this definitely try it out because it was really well done and it made some good commentary on some church culture that is prevalent in Utah sometimes um, and I just, I really liked it a lot. So yes, that is Shannon Hale. I definitely recommend her if you like fantasy, if you like fairy tale retellings, definitely pick up some of her. She does such a good job. She creates characters that are lovable and plots that are interesting. I love also that she writes for such a variety of age ranges. So like I said, that is it. Be sure to comment down below if you've read any of Shannon Hale's books and what you thought of them, or if there's an author you would like to see one of these videos talk about, let me know down below. Be sure to subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more content from me. I post videos every Friday. Thank you for watching and I will see you next week. Bye.